Did you know that you used to be able to play Warzone in third person or as a ghost? Limited time modes in Warzone is something that's died down a lot since Warzone 1, but looking back, we had way more than ever thought we did. Some I never knew existed, some have never been seen again, and some desperately need to come back. So today, we're going to take a look at the entire history of limited time modes in Warzone. Pretty simple criteria here, it just has to be a game mode that isn't Plunder, Battle Royale, or Resurgence. And also, if an LTM returns in the timeline, I'm not going to mention it again. But go ahead and comment your favorite limited time mode as we get started. This was technically the first LTM we saw in Warzone, and it was a pretty simple concept. The only weapons available throughout the match were snipers and shotguns. This was a very vanilla and basic limited time mode, and it makes sense considering it was the very first one we ever saw, and it definitely paved the road for a lot of good LTMs to come in the future. It saw a return on Rebirth Island, but never again after that. Realism was a mode added to Modern Warfare 19 that was kind of like hardcore but with a few more quirks. They decided to add a version of this to Battle Royale that I really don't think was necessary. Your headshot damage was buffed and you didn't have a mini map or really anything on your HUD. I'm sure this mode had some type of cult following but I think it was pretty forgettable, hence why it's never made a return in Warzone. Next, we had Juggernaut Royale, which was the exact same as a standard Battle Royale match, only at some point, a Juggernaut crate would be dropped into the map. Whichever player secured the crate was granted Juggernaut armor and a minigun until they died or won the match. I wouldn't mind this coming back in a random event or something, since it really wasn't anything crazy, and it definitely doesn't deserve its own mode. Sure, you had insane health, but you were an easy target since you were marked on the map for everyone to see and also moved super slow. This mode has returned a handful of times, but the last time we've ever seen it was October of 2020. And the reason I don't think they brought it back in its own mode is because they've implemented in other game modes where you can just get it naturally. Like you could find them in the bunkers I'm pretty sure at one point, but it really just doesn't deserve its own game mode anymore. This mode was pretty self-explanatory. All that was going on here was changing the player count from 150 to 200. I'll go ahead and lump Extreme Resurgence here, which more than doubled the player count on Rebirth Island, which made for a fun and chaotic Resurgence LTM. Then we had Stimulus, which was later renamed to Buyback. This didn't have the traditional gulag, and as long as you had $4,500, you would come back immediately. Similar to Resurgence, but it came at a price this time. This mode came back multiple times. Rumble was a game mode that was just 52 versus 52 deathmatch with respawns on Verdansk. It did exactly what it was trying to achieve and was actually really good for free to play players. Nothing I would really grind, but it's definitely like a nice little time waster for someone who doesn't want to buy the full game. And it has made a couple comebacks, but ever since lockdown's been around, I don't really see a need for this to return whatsoever. <laughs> Mini Royale is one of the more reoccurring game modes that actually makes some sense. It's pretty much expedited Battle Royale and begins on a much smaller portion of the map and circles close much faster. Mind you, this was actually before Resurgence existed, so it was a pretty big hit amongst the community. Some might say it's not needed today, but I think it's different enough from Battle Royale and Resurgence to justify it coming back, and that's why it's the game mode that's been bought back the most. I'll be honest, you could tell me this entire excerpt from the Call of Duty wiki is mumbo jumbo because I never heard of nor played this mode. To me, it kind of sounded like multi-team deathmatch. 17 teams race to 100 kills and that's pretty much all there is to it. However, people on a kill streak get marked as a king and if you take them out, it counts as five points instead of one. Sounds like a pretty good mode. I just never got around to playing it and it's never been brought back since. All right. This mode was awesome. Each team deployed next to a Bertha that we all know and love, only it's souped up with armor and a heavy turret. As long as your truck was still around, you could respawn, and if your truck gets destroyed, you could buy a truck redeploy marker to get another one. There were repair stations that let you fix up your truck. You could also upgrade your truck with things like better armor, a shorter turret cooldown, and trophy systems. The gas would move super quick, but also hit really hard, making your truck a necessity to winning. This mode seriously felt like all those moments you see in the Warzone trailers, but just non-stop. A super hectic game mode without any stress honestly. It acts as an amazing party mode that's made a handful of returns, most recently towards the end of Warzone 2. But if it were up to me, this mode would always be around. Warzone was on a roll at this point because we have yet another fan favorite. This was pretty much infected, but the Battle Royale version. After death, your player would skip the gulag and come back as a zombie. And if you killed humans and collected antivirals, you could come back as a human. Zombies had an EMP blast, a gas grenade, and most notable, a super jump. Same rules as regular Battle Royale, last human team remaining wins. Another fun aspect of this mode was that it took place on Verdansk at night, which correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first like alternate version of a map we would ever see in Warzone. We also saw a version on Rebirth Island, but then it would also return on Warzone 2 and grant Von Del on Al Mazra a night map, which many loved as well. This is yet another beloved mode that I think should also always be in the rotation, but I guess that would be way too easy. 
If you ever played Hyperscape, this was pretty much that. Towards the end of the match, a radio would spawn in and begin at like a timer of two minutes, I believe. If your team is able to hold the radio until the time runs out, you win. You're marked on the lap, so you'll pretty much have the entire lobby after you, which made it pretty difficult. I didn't play this mode that much, and I didn't really think it was all that fun, but definitely not bad by any means. The Rebirth version that came out later was far superior, though. <laughs> This is one of the more slept on modes in my opinion. It pretty much just added kill streaks to Warzone. After someone dies, they drop a dog tag that anyone can pick up, and when you do, you get a reward. Starting with a UAV, then a heavy weapon drop, a respawn token, a cluster strike, armor satchel, durable gas mask, airstrike, specialist bonus, and lastly, an advanced UAV. This directly incentivizes getting kills and results in the more aggressive players to be better off in the final circle, since there are no loadouts in this mode either. Also, randomly, they added exfil choppers during the final circle that you can use to win the game without even being the last team standing, which if I'm not mistaken was the first time you could win a battle royale match without being the last team standing. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I think the next time they would toy with this feature is in the battle royale preview we saw last month in Warzone 3. More on that later. We've seen elements of this game mode return, but Power Grab has not returned since the 80s action hero event. <laughs> This was an objective-based game mode that was 20v20 and had one team defending and one attacking. The attacking team was trying to escort the payload through all the checkpoints, while the defending team obviously was trying to prevent that. I think this is another game mode that worked really well for free-to-play players to grind guns since you had infinite respawns and had an objective to focus on. Kinda felt like playing War Mode, which was a really fun multiplayer game mode as well. Payload eventually made a return in Rebirth Island, but hasn't made a comeback since. <laughs> Clash was exactly like Rumble, but they added all the features of Battle Royale, like buy stations, armor plates, contracts, and events. Really not much here to say, other than I think they could have just reused the name Rumble and still made all these changes. I do think this is better than Rumble, though. Iron Trials pretty much revamped most accents of Warzone. Base health was more than doubled, snipers didn't one-shot outside of 30 meters, everything was more expensive at the buy stations, no free loadout, and ground loot was entirely different with Epic and Legendary being much more rare. I'm not really crazy on this mode, but I know it had a pretty solid following, and that's why it was like one of the most returned modes we've ever seen as well. They even had Titanium Trials Endurance, which is even more like hardcore than this. But if you want a bare bones battle royale experience, Iron Trials is definitely for you. Ghosts of Verdance was pretty much Zombie Royale, but with a ghost reskin. There are a handful of differences, like ghosts being able to teleport instead of having a gas grenade. There was also a sanity meter that I really don't know what triggered it, but it would cause like hallucinations and like audio cues if it filled up too much. This was another fun game mode, but I still think Zombie Royale was better. This mode was released alongside the Vanguard integration that restricted any and all assets from Cold War or Modern Warfare on Caldera. It was supposed to force the player to only using Vanguard guns to help promote and showcase their terrible game. The mode itself is a good idea, it kind of helps you like figure out what you like with the new guns and whatnot, but I just wish Vanguard was a better game. I really like the idea of Operation Flashback, I just think the execution was a bit lazy. Basically, this was a standard battle royale mode that brought back items from previous seasons and LTMs and Warzone, such as redacted weapons, vault key cards, and specialist bonus. I mean, seriously, that was like pretty much it. This mode has never returned, and I wouldn't mind if it did because now there's so many things we haven't seen in forever that would be fun to see back again. A lot of those things I mentioned in my entire history of forgotten features in Warzone video, which you should definitely check out after this. The concept for the mode is there, just needs way better execution. This was an April Fool's mode that gave players a grenade launcher, no parachutes, and no fall damage. Which doesn't really sound that crazy, right? Well, let's factor in the fact that any explosive damage resulted in you being thrown backwards. This includes rocket launchers, lethal grenades, stun grenades, but most notably, explosive and fire ammo. That means if you're shooting someone with that, they just continuously get thrown back. It's fun seeing silly game modes like these come to Warzone around April, and I'm not really mad they brought it back in Warzone 2. You could kind of lump this in with totally normal battle royale since it had all the same mechanics except you had also unlimited respawns until the seventh circle and spawned in with specialist bonus. This was actually blood my many since you could totally frag out like crazy since there were so many respawns and just like people were always in the air so many free kills and technically the kill record on rebirth island is on this mode with 70 by figo. This was one of the craziest and most random crossovers we've ever seen in Warzone. It was Resurgence on Caldera with Godzilla and Kong roaming the map. Aside from wreaking havoc on the map and players, you could actually control the Titans if you collected enough Monarch intel, which was pretty much the equivalent of dog tags in the power grab mode. Classic last team standing wins, but this was honestly a lot of fun, but felt kind of out of place to me. I think they had this crossover in the vault as a last ditch effort to save Caldera. The reason I say that is that this LTM was introduced to the game over a year after Godzilla and Kong was in theaters. This mode was fun and all, but it really feels like a fever dream to me.
This was the same as Battle Royale, only it had a continuous circle closing, you spawned in with your loadout, a gas mask, and an extra life. They also had this siphon system, which we had never seen in Warzone before, where when you got a kill, you got all your health and armor back instantaneously. This mode has never returned, and I don't know why, because it seems like it's something the community really enjoyed. I think we've only seen the continuous circle close in Armored Royale, if I'm not mistaken. Last Call was a cool mode that was played on Caldera and saw multiple bomb sites around the map. You could choose to detonate or defuse the bombs, and for each one you defused and protected, you got a point for the heroes, and for each one you planted and destroyed, you got a point for the villains. I thought it was a cool feature that you could decide which side to be on at any given moment during the match, so I want a resurgence timer and this makes for a decent LTM. Kinda gives me lockdown vibes for some reason. This mode has never returned in Warzone as well. This is exactly the same as scopes and scatter guns, only it was crossbows and melee weapons. Throw it on Caldera and have the pacing of mini BR and you've got a very toxic and forgettable game mode that has never returned since. This was a pretty simple mode that just changed all the ground loot to epic or legendary on Rebirth Island. The focus was to give everyone a chance and make gunfights really like kind of let the better man win rather than rushing to get your load out. At the launch of Warzone 2, we saw two brand new LTMs. The first we'll discuss is the third person mode, which was exactly that. Trios on Almazra, but in third person. This was every bit of an experimental mode, and I'm sure it had some type of cult following, but definitely not for me. Kata is simply not designed for third person, hence why this mode has never made a return. This was the mode that was supposed to showcase the assimilation feature added to Warzone 2. For those that didn't know, if you had room in your squad, you could invite other squads that weren't full to join you. The only difference in Unhinged was that it was trios, but allowed for assimilation up to six. This meant if you found another trio you were vibing with on Proxy Chat, you could invite them to your squad and become a squad of six for the rest of the game. This mode wasn't that popular and didn't make a comeback, but I think they could bring it back, but just instead of adding the assimilation feature, just make it a squad of six from the start. I would love to see them play with the squad sizes a little bit more in some LTMs, but that's just something they I've never tried. This was basically Rocket League and Warzone, and a pretty clunky version at that. It was 3v3 and first to five and with pretty standard rules, I mean it was very straightforward. I think this LTM's main goal, no pun intended, was to promote the Pogba, Messi, and Neymar skins, and probably did a good job of that. This was another one of my favorite modes that I hope makes a return for Warzone 3 at some point. It was played in Almazar with 150 players, only it was Resurgence, and the first circle was much smaller. This meant you landed right in the action and had little to no time between engagements. My thing with Resurgence is there isn't a whole lot of opportunity for sniping, but this allows you to do so since you're playing on a large scale map. This game mode would make a handful of returns for the rest of Warzone 2. This wasn't really an LTM, but we'll go ahead and mark this as the first time Ranked was introduced into Warzone. Then about a month later, we got Lockdown, which is now a near-permanent mode as well. Just thought it was worth mentioning for the timeline's sake. This was the boys crossover that was just Resurgence on Ashika or Von Del with added superpowers from the boys in the form of Temp V as a field upgrade. This included laser vision, teleportation, electrical shockwave, and super jump. I really enjoyed this mode as a party mode, but my only complaint is that this was the only way you could play Resurgence for like two weeks. There seriously was no other playlist. So for a period of time, if you wanted to play Resurgence, you had to deal with superpowers. Overall, really fun game mode, but just give us the option to not play it as well. This was a Christmas LTM added to Warzone 3 shortly after launch that I actually thought was a lot of fun since there was a lot going on here. It was Resurgence on Urzikstan, only there were several Christmas trees you could go to that you could secure that gave you a black site key that opened a door that teleported you to a black site. Also, the tree had a cooler filled with snowballs that were lethals that not only hurt enemies, but stunned and flashed them as well. Probably the most toxic lethal we've ever had since you didn't even need a direct impact to hit them. If you didn't want to go to the black site, you could hunt zombie reindeer that would drop a crazy amount of loot as well. Or you could head straight to Santa's sleigh, aka a Christmas version of the train, which is not only where you can find Santa with the minigun, but where the circle is guaranteed to finish. The final circle moving continuously with the train was just so much fun. It made the game feel action-packed and super hectic and kind of like forced you to play aggressive. This is the perfect blend between chaotic and fun, which is what makes a good LTM. I really hope they bring this back next year. This is the most recent LTM we've seen, and I was kind of debating on whether I should even include it or not, but I do think it's worth mentioning since it's probably going to be a reoccurring mode. It basically acts as an experimental mode to toy with new concepts and ideas being implemented to Warzone. The most recent one was showcasing an exfil feature that lets you withdraw from a match and receive a bonus for doing so. I think this mode could streamline getting new content to Warzone and actually giving the community a chance for some input, which is something we've never had. And that brings us to modern day. But as you can see, the falloff for limited time modes was drastic once Warzone 1 was gone, and I think has now been something 
something they've neglected or even given up on entirely. Don't get me wrong, they've had their fair share of misses, but I think they've had valuable modes that could help give the players some variety and a more casual experience. The playlists have always been annoying to me in Warzone, but if it were up to me, I would make it something along the lines of Battle Royale, all squad sizes, Resurgence, all squad sizes, and more importantly, all maps, Plunderer, Lockdown, whichever one you're feeling, Ranked. These are the, the four that should always be in Warzone, and they pretty much are. But then there should be some type of respawn mode, being like Payload or Rumble, then a party mode like Armored Royale or Zombie Royale, and then Battle Royale Preview whenever that's available as well. This would be such a better selection than what we have today. For some reason, they like being really restrictive and kind of like picking and choosing what we can play and when we can play it and how many people can play it, but just having options would be super nice. Maybe the pub lobbies are getting super sweaty and you just want to go play Zombie Royale before your fist goes through your monitor. I don't see what damage it causes by having just a bunch of game modes available. I mean, I think they could even do more game modes than the ones I just suggested. Let's take other games, for example, like Halo. They had a ton of party modes and also a bunch of sweaty game modes as well. I don't know why they won't do something like this. But that's all I have for you guys. If you're still watching this, you must have enjoyed the video at least a little bit. So maybe consider subscribing. Comment your favorite LTM down below. Also, check out some of my other Warzone history videos. Be on the lookout for my live streams. They're right here on YouTube. You don't even have to go to another app. Join my Discord if you're feeling crazy. And if you liked, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Comment if you'd like. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.